Hey, what's up? It's Mike again from Bav House. Today we got a E39 530i in here. Um, basically, it's having some intermittent starting issues. The car will run, no problems. You turn it off, try to turn it back on. The car won't crank, can't hear the fuel pump. Um, prime, uh, there's a parasitic draw also. So it's having some weird electrical issues. We're actually not able to connect uh, any input tool to it. That's a snap on Solus. Um, our Foxwell scan tool, our um, Maxi Check, Autel, so, uh, and then also our BMW dealer laptop that's not connecting IMPA or ISTA. Uh, if you pull coil packs out of it, it's not even throwing a check engine light. So there's definitely a DME issue here. I'm going to show you how to diagnose it. So first things we're going to do is remove the engine cover so I can access the coils. And we're going to remove this um, filter box on the passenger side corner and that's how we're going to access the DME. So I'm going to get to that now. So I'm going to take this pick, take these covers off, put that aside, and use the same pick to pop these clips off this intake tube for HVAC system. Just be careful, don't break these. There's three of them. Move it back slide it off and then turn this whole unit to the side and just let it sit. I'm going to remove this cover up here for this air box. Just like that. That goes to the side. Down here there's this spring clip. Kind of push on the springs and then pull it out. It kind of sits on these threads and you can pick this whole thing up and walk it out to the side. And we're going to put all this to the side. I'm going to go grab a 10 millimeter socket. Um, I'm actually going to remove this entirely just to remove the uh, engine cover. Um, so I'll be right back. Alright, so to remove the engine cover you have two 10 millimeters. Um, I just put these on yesterday so I don't need a ratchet because I know I just did them hand tight but you will probably need a ratchet. Uh, they are too nuts. I can get it out. Okay, so that's what the nuts look like. Put that aside. Is it bad? Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cover off the oil cap and I'm going to release the whole thing and take it with me. And I'll put the cap back on. I'm going to set it to the side. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the cover off of the DME box over there. And that's going to be an H5 holding those in place. Alright, so this is an H5. There's going to be four of them. I dropped that one yesterday, so I'm going to have to go fishing for that. Uh, you know it's on the sump pan. So, take out the four that um, hold this in place. If you look, you can see these stains all over the place, like like all over here, and that's evidence of there being uh, like leaves or and mud and stuff piled up here, which could have, um, you know, made the drains that actually go down into here from that air box. Um, worked improperly and causing water to back up and this cover was not torqued down all the way um, originally so I'll show you why that might be a problem so if that's not draining properly and this seal is not connected to this box tight water is actually able to seep in to this DME box over here and if you look on the side of the DME this is the DME here it almost looks like there's some rust spotting or some you know, liquid droplets kind of um, superimposed onto the DME. And my hunch is that these issues are actually happening due to water getting into this box. So now that we're here, I'm going to show you what's going on. So what we're running into with this car is that after um, the car runs and uh, the owner actually takes the key out and walks away, when he comes back to the car, even as something as simple as putting fuel in it, um, the car won't start. So at first we went after you know the fuel pump because the fuel pump wasn't priming. But after um, testing the fuel pump and even swap testing it or even replacing it, um, the issue persisted. So then we started thinking, why else would the fuel pump not be priming? That's unrelated to the pump itself. Which at that point I went to the front and um, checked at the fuel rail for fuel rail pressure, 
and we actually did have uh, fuel rail pressure at the rail when the car was cranking and not starting, also while the fuel pump was not priming. So at that point I started thinking that this was more of an uh, ignition issue rather than a fuel injection issue. So what I did is I took a test light and went to the plug for the coil pack. And what we have here is a ground, we have a signal, and we have a power. So the top left one, or the lower right, depending on how you're looking at it, is going to be our power. So you want constant power while the key is on from that terminal. So what we're doing is we're taking ground, we're grounding it, we're putting our test light into power, and now put the key to position two. And if you saw, it fluttered, now we have constant power. So at this point the car would, would start. So you can go ahead and start it. So the car runs fine. Now shut it off. Now right now, the car is off, but the DME is still giving signal to a lot of these different um, wiring points throughout the car. And the second you're gonna see it turns off. So now it's off. Now the DME has completely shut off. So now put the key in position two again. Now this is the problem we're running into. You can hear the relay clicking. This is the main relay for the DME, that blue one back there. And it is going crazy. And you can visually see what's happening, that air through that constant power not being this color. So right now it's constant, the car will start. But turn the, take the key out again. Now we're gonna let it, the DME turn off once, once more. Now the DME is off, put it in position two. And now it's happening again. So try to crank it over now. You can keep going. So at that point, it's just going to be flooding the cylinder. So we're not going to keep doing this for too long. So basically what's happening is nothing is getting enough constant power to actually do anything. So the, the motor can be cranking, 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 but if there's no spark, or no signal to the fuel pump to send more fuel, the car's not gonna be able to start or turn over. So at this point, I swap tested the um, main relay for the DME and it did the same thing. So if you look, I can screw with the main relay and just push on it, get a different connection, and now it has power again. And now the car will start. So at this point, our approach is we're going to remove the DME and check for signs of damage, um, mostly actually corrosion from water. Um, and then if that's the case, we're going to purchase a new DME, get it sent out, uh, programmed to the EWS for this vehicle, and then hopefully solve this issue just with that. There is a chance that there are um, other spots corroded within this whole um, box here, but we're gonna you know, start at the most important and then work our way out of there, but yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. Okay, so the DME is back here. The way we're gonna start this is, this one has a push tab. You're gonna start on the left and then move your way to the right. Kind of push that tab in. You can do it with your hand. I just kind of give it a little persuasion. This is gonna be one where you push in and then you drop this top latch like that, and that top latch pushes it out. So if you didn't see what I just did, you push this and then move that and that's how that one gets removed. This is going to be another one just like that. Um, they only go in one way so it's not, you can't screw this up when you're reinstalling. And as of now I can already tell that there is water in the DME because I can see corrosion on the plugs. So I'll show you in a second if I can get this one off. All right, see all that? That's all water corrosion. So we're gonna keep going though. Now after you have all those pulled out, this one's another one we just pinch and pull. There's two tabs back here actually holding the DME into the bracket, pull that out, and here's your DME. Now if you look, that is significant damage on the outside of the DME, 
and we're going to open it up and see what's going on inside. It looks like this is going to be like a T10 to open up the DME. So let me go grab that and we'll see what's up. All right, so it was actually a uh, T15. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this up the open just by removing four uh, tiny Torx bolts on all the corners, or screws rather, machine screws. Basically what we're doing is we're going to check the motherboard for um, any kind of moisture inside. So this will help me determine if it's just, you know, corroded um, leads on the outside of the DME or if the motherboard itself is damaged. Alright, so I got to get underneath. And if you look, there is corrosion. It's not the worst thing in the world, but there's definitely something going on there. But let's see what the other side looks like. So out here there is some corrosion, but honestly I don't think that matters too much. But yeah, I actually did get a little bit on the inside. Not as bad as some of these I've seen, but Oh yeah, there we go. If you look there or there on this chip here, um, that one's labeled A21. There's definitely some issues there. Um, just be careful not to touch anything while you're in here. It's not like it really matters that much, but you don't want to create any more damage. So at this point, I will be getting a new DME for this car, setting it out and programming it. Um, I'm sure this could be cleaned somehow, but not the guy to do that. All right, there you go. That's how to basically diagnose and remove uh, a DME and check it for any kind of physical damage. Um, if you didn't get to see what we were looking at for the terminals um, when we were inside the car, you can see all that blue, bluish white corrosion. So I'm going to send some pictures out to my computer guys and see what they have to say about it, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be programming a different DME to this vehicle. Alright, so just I got the DME back together. This car has to go home and you know it's known to be working at least a little bit. So what we're going to do is just take some electrical cleaner and just at least we're not going to go in there with like X Q-tip or anything, but this can't be spent, but we're just gonna spray down those contacts and hope we're doing something. Even just unplugging and reconnecting should help a little bit. But shake out any excess. Let it dry before you do anything. And I'm just gonna spray some air in there. So that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna screw around with this anymore. You can see there's still evidence but um, that's as far as I'm gonna go. So hopefully that maybe helps it you know, start up a little bit more often. But um, we kinda know how to get it started when it doesn't want to. And the trick to that is just to screw with that blue relay, just trick it into turning the DME off and on a few times and you'll be able to get some power to it. And what you're gonna listen for when you put it back in is if it's making that ticking noise, it's not gonna start. If it's making no noise, it it's not going to start, but if it's making uh, the sound of all the you know relays throughout the engine bay being energized, then the car will start. So I'm going to reinstall this. Um, you can see, you know, it's going to be pretty much the re reverse of removal, which is just get it into place first. I think I put it in backwards. Yeah, so it goes like that, and then you're going to start with this one. Put that in. This one to push these in, you just 
kind of get them into place and then push that up but for some reason this is being a little funky oh okay so you start all the way down with this and then push it up and then it's gonna go this one push it all the way up and this one And then this one last. And just like that, go and uh, try to start it. Let's see if everything's working. All right, start off. All right, so we'll uh, get this DME sent out, or maybe get a replacement DME sent out. Get the EWS programs. Um, if you don't know what EWS is, it's basically the key recognition recognition uh, module that actually, you know, um, makes your keys, locks, uh, computer, and uh, that module itself kind of one unit. That's pretty much your car's identity. Um, so we're gonna get that all set out, program, maybe get a key cut as well because I know he wants another key made, um, and then I'll get back to you guys with another installation video and kind of a follow up of how that worked out and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. So as always, thanks for watching. Until next time.